Mammalian development begins with the fusion of egg and sperm to form a single-cell embryo called the zygote. As an embryo develops into an adult organism, cells become committed to specific cell fates. Cells in the inner cell mass of the blastocyst are pluripotent, meaning that they can give rise to all cell types in an organism, including neurons, red blood cells, and pancreatic cells. The process by which less specialized cells become increasingly specialized is called cell differentiation. During development, pluripotent inner cell mass cells give rise to multipotent stem cells that are more committed to specific lineages. These multipotent stem cells then give rise to progenitor cells which have limited potential and self-renewal. Finally, differentiated cells are generated from committed progenitors. This same process can be mimicked in culture when pluripotent embryonic stem cells are isolated from the inner cell mass of a blastocyst. As cells become more specialized, they undergo epigenetic changes that reinforce a new cell identity. Epigenetic changes are non-genetic changes that affect the reading of DNA without altering the DNA sequence. Gene expression is highly dependent on a gene's physical accessibility to transcription factors. DNA methylation, or the addition of methyl groups to specific cytosine bases, can repress or silence gene activity by preventing transcription factors from binding to a gene's promoter. A gene's physical accessibility may also be affected by interactions between DNA and histones, the spools around which DNA is coiled. Histone modifications such as acetylation can cause histones to loosen or tighten DNA. Histone acetylation decreases the affinity of histones for DNA, allowing transcription factors to access and bind to a gene's promoter. DNA methylation and histone modifications lead to a specific pattern of gene expression in a differentiated cell. Can a differentiated cell be redirected to express genes that characterize another cell type? Experimental procedures have been identified that allow certain cell types to take on the nuclear gene expression patterns of other cell types. The first cloning experiments in the frog model determined that nuclei from intestinal epithelium cells can be reversed to a totipotent state when transferred to enucleated frog eggs. More recent experiments have shown that liver cell nuclei can express previously silenced muscle genes when fused with multinucleate muscle fibers and that overexpression of specific genes in skin cells can lead to the behavior and global gene expression of pluripotent stem cells. Taken together, these experiments suggest that cell differentiation and associated epigenetic changes are reversible. Almost all cells in the body are genetically identical even though their distinct morphology and behavior is determined by a specific pattern of gene expression. Nuclear reprogramming describes a change in the nuclear gene expression of one cell type to that of an unrelated cell type or embryo. The genetic equivalence across cell types makes nuclear reprogramming feasible. Nuclear reprogramming has received significant research attention because of its therapeutic potential. Somatic cells from a patient can be reprogrammed into immune-compatible cells that behave like pluripotent stem cells. These cells can be expanded and induced to differentiate into a needed cell type in vitro, providing patient-specific cells for replacement of diseased or damaged tissues. A needed cell type may also be directly generated from patient cells without the need for intermediate pluripotent cells. There are currently three methods for achieving reprogramming. Somatic cell nuclear transfer cell fusion, and direct reprogramming. In somatic cell nuclear transfer, the nucleus of a somatic cell is injected into an egg that has had its own chromatin removed. When the donor nucleus of a somatic cell is transferred to an enucleated egg, some of the somatic proteins are also transferred. However, the large volume of egg cytoplasm dilutes somatic factors, allowing the embryonic transcriptional program to dominate and reprogram somatic chromatin such that egg proteins are produced. Somatic cell nuclear transfer can lead to the development of a normal blastocyst from which embryonic stem cells can be derived for transplantation therapies. This process is termed therapeutic cloning. Fusion of unrelated cell types has been used to investigate cell plasticity. When two cells are fused, a heterocaryon with two distinct nuclei is formed. In some cases, nuclei from fused partner cells merge, leading to a stable hybrid cell. Hybrids generated from the fusion of embryonic stem cells and fibroblasts can behave like embryonic stem cells. In a small percentage of hybrid cells, stem cell-specific genes that were previously silenced in the somatic cell are reactivated from somatic chromosomes. 
reprogrammed cells that display embryonic stem cell morphology, growth, and gene expression have been isolated by using a genetic marker that indicates reactivation of stem cell-specific genes. Heterocaryons in hybrids have also been generated by the fusion of two somatic cells. When hepatocytes are fused with myotubes, non-muscle nuclei in the resulting heterocaryons express muscle genes, indicating that the muscle phenotype is dominant. Currently, low reprogramming efficiencies and high DNA ploidy of hybrid cells limit the clinical applications of cell fusion. Liver cells, as well as other cell types, have also been redirected to a muscle-like transcriptional program through forced expression of the muscle transcription factor MyoD. Direct reprogramming involves the ectopic expression of specific genes that confer a new transcriptional program on a cell. More recently, the expression of four factors in fibroblasts led to the generation of stem cell-like cells or induced pluripotent stem cells. After viral integration, endogenous stem cell-specific genes are reactivated. These genes remain active even after viruses are silenced. Follow-up work has shown that iPS cells can be generated using non-integrating viruses that transiently express these four factors. In addition, direct reprogramming has been used to generate insulin-producing beta cells from pancreatic exocrine cells. This process is termed lineage reprogramming because a differentiated cell type is generated from another differentiated cell type. To date, experimental methods can recapitulate cell differentiation for a range of pathways, including hematopoietic, neural, and mesenchymal. Reprogramming of patient cells can yield immune-compatible pluripotent stem cells. These cells can be induced to differentiate into a needed cell type in vitro. Alternatively, a needed cell type can be directly generated from a patient cell, eliminating the need for intermediate pluripotent cells. By understanding the molecular mechanisms behind reprogramming, we can develop more efficient, direct strategies for generating patient-specific cells. These immune-compatible cells can be used for transplantation therapies that treat a wide range of diseases and injury.